Hi, and welcome back. Um, we're talking about fables again. My name is Miss Lee, and I teach third grade at McGilvra Elementary School, and I'm so glad you're with us here today. Um, we, we're going to get started right away. Um, we are still determining important ideas, but now we've moved on to fiction and a special type of fiction, which is called fables. Fables usually involve animals, and they have some type of lesson or a theme that we can um, learn from it. It's a message that the author wants us to consider while we read it or while we listen to it in this case, and then make a connection to it in our own lives. So yes, uh, the previous lesson, we talked about two different fables. Uh, one was the um, about Madame Rhinoceros and her dress, and also the young rooster. Um, in both of those stories, we talked about what the possible lesson or the theme um, there was from it. Uh, we enjoyed the story, we listened to it, we talked about theme. Today we are layering on one more layer, and we know that that's something that happens in our reading and writing curriculum, is that we always layer on one more and one more and one more and one more, because that's what really what reading is all about, where we use different strategies and we, we layer on a little bit more in each time so that we can get deeper into um, the text. So today you're going to hear um, and think about a story, another fable, where you're going to visualize it to understand and enjoy it. Then we're going to think about possible themes in the story. We know that some books or stories can have more than one theme. And then we're going to make a text to text connection where we're going to look at two pieces of text and connect those two. And then we're going to make a text to self connection where I make a connection um, from the lesson um, that was in the fable. Yesterday, we just kind of talked about themes and we said, ah, yeah, it looks like in Madame Rhinoceros, maybe we shouldn't always listen to what everyone says because it could not always be truthful. But we didn't take that and then say, well, how about in my life? What kind of connection can I make? Today, that's what we're going to do. It's the next layer that we're going to add on. So join with me as we continue on this road of, of looking at fables. And once again, we are going to be reading from the book called Fables by Arnold Lobel, and it's published um, by HarperCollins Publishers. And the fables are a special type of story with animals as characters and with an important theme or lesson about life. All right, we are going to um, start with our fable. <laughs> That's why we're here, right? And it is, going, it is out of the book Fables by Arnold Lobel. And it, which is um, published by HarperCollins Publishing. And um, we are reading the story uh, for the first time around as you visualize. And there's two reasons why we do that. So for the first reason is because uh, it helps us with our comprehension. It helps us understand what is happening in the story because we're making pictures in our mind as we're hearing the story or even as we're reading. So one, it helps with our comprehension, our understanding. Two, it helps us just enjoy it just a little bit more as we're creating those pictures in our mind as we hear the story or read the story again, okay? So if you'd like to close your eyes as I read it to you, that's fantastic. Um, if you'd like to um, watch the screen and yet make the pictures in, in the, I kind of call it like a camera in my head um, that's making a movie, um, you can go ahead and do that as well. And then um, I'm gonna stop at one part where um, I, I ask a question right in the middle. So right now also, you might wanna pause the video and go grab yourself either a piece of paper or maybe you use a notebook to write the, this stuff down in, then you might wanna grab that as well. Um, and we can get started. All right, so fables. Um, the fable I'm reading today is called The Mouse at the Seashore. And this is the picture that has been provided by the author. Okay. Give you a little bit to look at it, kind of maybe study it a bit. It gets my brain focused on the fact that it's going to be about a mouse and possibly a seashore in it. Um, it's kind of, I kind of looked at this at first and I, I had some I wonder statements that I did. And now my, brain, my, my mind is ready to hear this story. I'm ready to go, all right? The mouse at the seashore. A mouse told his mother and father that he was going on a trip to the seashore. We are very alarmed or frightened, they cried. The world is full of terrors, 
frightening things. You must not go. I have made my decision, said the mouse firmly. I have never seen the ocean and it is high time that I did. Nothing can make me change my mind. Well, then we cannot stop you, said mother and father mouse, but do be careful. So the next day, at the first light of dawn, the mouse began his journey. Even before the morning had ended, the mouse had come to know trouble and fear. It means the mouse came to know some, some hard times and some things that made him scared. A cat jumped out from behind a tree. I will eat you for lunch, he said. It was a narrow escape for the mouse. He ran for his life, but he left a part of his tail in the mouth of the cat. By afternoon, the mouse had been attacked by birds and dogs. He tried, he, sorry, he lost, he had lost his way several times. He was bruised and bloodied. He was tired and frightened. Okay. I'm gonna stop right here and I'm going to ask questions on the next slide of what is happening in the story so far. And you might wanna stop, and, uh, stop here and then go to the next slide and maybe write those answers down. Okay, now after writing down what has happened in the story so far, the next follow-up question to that is, what do you think will happen to the mouse? And here's your opportunity to write down those two things. He was tired and frightened. At evening, the mouse slowly climbed the last hill and saw the seashore spreading out before him. He watched the waves rolling onto the beach one after another. All the full colors of the sunset filled the sky. How beautiful, cried the mouse. I wish that mother and father were here to see this with me. The moon and the stars began to appear over the ocean. The mouse sat silently on top of the hill. He was overwhelmed by a feeling of deep peace and contentment. And contentment means a feeling of happiness or being satisfied. Okay. And that's the end of our first read of that story. There is two more questions to answer in the next, um, in the next part of this video. And then we'll go back and we'll read it together. And um, instead of visualizing, the next time we'll think, um, ask you to go ahead and think about um, what possible themes or lessons that are in this um, fable. And now that we're done with our first reading where I asked you to visualize, here's two questions that I would like you to think about. Uh, what did you picture happening in the story? Maybe it's different from the beginning all the way through. There are some parts in there that made it very easy to visualize. And how did you picture the mouse at the end? Now for our second read through, I'd like you to follow along as I read. If you do happen to have your uh, student response book, it's on page 71, and you can turn there now to follow along. If not, maybe you can make this screen as large as you can on your, um, on your screen that you're viewing this from, and we can go from there. Uh, and this time as you hear or read along, what I'd really like you to do is think about what people can learn from the mouse in the story. Let me repeat that last section again. So as I reread this fable, I would like you to think about what people can learn from the mouse in the story. So now the first time I was asking you to visualize so you kind of understand what's happening in the story and enjoy it. And now the second time I'm gonna ask you to read it in a different way or listen to it more closely, as we call this close reading, where now you're going to be looking for some other kind of information. You're gonna think about what people can learn from the mouse in the story or this fable called The Mouse at the Seashore. A mouse told his mother and father that he was going on a trip to the seashore. We are very alarmed, they cried. The world is full of terrors. You must not go. So they were very frightened because the world was full of frightening things. I have made my decision, said the mouse firmly. I have never seen the ocean and it is high time that I did. Nothing can make me change my mind. Then we cannot stop you, said mother and father mouse, but do be careful. The next day, in the first light of dawn, the mouse began his journey. Even before the morning had ended, the mouse came to know trouble and fear. 
had a very difficult and scary time he was having there. A cat jumped out from behind a tree. I will eat you for lunch, he said. It was a narrow escape for the mouse. He ran for his life, but he left a part of his tail in the mouth of the cat. By afternoon, the mouse had been attacked by birds and dogs. He had lost his way several times. He was bruised and bloodied. He was tired and frightened. At evening, the mouse slowly climbed the last hill and saw the seashore spreading out before him. He watched the waves rolling onto the beach one after another. All the colors of the sunset filled the sky. How beautiful, cried the mouse. I wish that mother and father were here to see this with me. The moon and the stars began to appear over the ocean. The mouse sat silently on top of the hill. He was overwhelmed by a feeling of deep peace and contentment. And we talked about how content means feeling or being satisfied or happy. Now with the second read along or read through, what is something that people can learn from the mouse in the story? Not only do I want you to share with me what the um, theme or the lesson is in this fable of what you could learn from the mouse, but also what in the story makes you think that. So I can use the sentence starter where I say, I think the lesson or the theme is, and the reason I think this is blank. Okay. So for myself, I think the lesson is, or I think one of the themes that uh, that is in this is maybe that even though times are really tough, if you keep pushing on, you can um, you can achieve your goals, all right? Uh, the reason I think this is because the mouse went through a lot of hardship and but then at the end got to his dream or his goal of seeing the ocean. Um, there are other themes possibly that you're thinking as well. And that's something that here is an opportunity to write those down or share them with someone around you. All right, now we're going to make a text to text connection with the fable that we just heard and a book that you might have heard earlier um, if you've been following along in our series. Um, so the fable, The Mouse at the Seashore, um, is one piece of text and we're going to connect that or see things that we find similar with another text. And the one we've chosen is Wilma Unlimited by Kathleen Krull. And this, this edition is published by the Development Studies Center through an arrangement with the Houghton Mifflin um, Harcourt uh, Publishing Company. Um, and so when we do text to text connections, we're looking at one piece of text and seeing what we can see with another one, kind of comparing it together. Um, and then and then the next step would be some a connection that we make to ourselves. So the last time when we talked about our two fables, we kind of talked about what we when we read them, we visualized, and then we thought about the theme for them. And then we practiced in our IDR reading and saying, what might be some themes or lessons in this book? Now remember when we said in our reading, um, when we read and in our writing um, and in this curriculum, we always layer on levels. And we go layer and layer and layer so that we're working on all of these reading and writing strategies and skills all the time, but not everything all at once. So we want you to do one and then practice it and then let layer on another little piece and then practice that too. So we are already experts at visualizing. We've done that all year long. We're pretty good at um, understanding the story and then being able to think as we hear or listen to the story because we do that we've done that all year almost too with questioning and wondering and this time when I asked you to think about the theme or a lesson and we practiced that before and then we practice that now and so now we're just taking it one more step one more layer that we're adding on where we're going to compare it to another text so then we can compare it to something in ourselves so we have here this book um, and I'm not going to read it to you because I can't show you the pictures as well as what I found in another YouTube video. So you're going to go into the next screen and you're going to watch this book being read to you. And then you'll come back and we'll talk about some things between the seashore and this. What a fantastic story about Wilma Rudolph. I'm always so inspired after I hear that story or I read it. 
um, it's really a pleasure for me to to be able to hear that story over and over again. Um, now, so we want to take the time time to think about this um, and think what are some of the things that we learned from Wilma Rudolph's life that we could use in our own lives. So I'm taking this piece of text and really thinking about it. And some of the things that I thought of was to never give up. She persisted on. She always went for things that she wanted, uh, even though there were things in front of her that are more difficult, she always kept going. And that's something that maybe I could see as a theme or a lesson. And another thing that I thought of is that you can overcome tough obstacles to do big things. Uh, not only did she face a lot of obstacles because of her leg and her condition that she was in, but also because she grew up in a time when things were a lot more difficult for African Americans. And so I think that she just faced really tough things, but she persisted um, and she had such bravery and such courage. And so those are the things that I was thinking. And maybe you have some other ideas as well. And now this is the time where you put together the two stories and we make a text to text connection. How does the story of the mouse in the seashore remind you of the story of Wilma Rudolph? I'm going to repeat that again. So how does the story of the mouse in the seashore remind you of the story of Wilma Rudolph? What are the connections that you make between those texts? This might be a perfect time for you to do some writing um, because reading about, sorry, writing about our reading is very important uh, to make those connections, um, not just from text to text, but now to make it to ourselves. And this is where this text to self connection is happening. The question here is, have you ever worked really hard to accomplish or finish something and felt very happy when you were done? Again, let me repeat that question. It says, have you ever worked really hard to accomplish or finish something and felt very happy when you were done? I think that we can see that that is something that happened in the mouse at the seashore. We can also see that this is something that happened to Wilma Rudolph in Wilma Unlimited. And now we're making the connection from those two pieces of text to ourselves. And so in, in writing, you can explain what happened. You might, in a first paragraph, explain the situation or your goal. Maybe talk about what it was that was happening. And then two, you could write about the hard work that you did step by step. What did you do? What were the steps that you took in order to achieve your goal? Number three, you might want to talk about the obstacles that you faced. We, can, we know for sure that the mouse and Wilma, Wilma Rudolph definitely had some obstacles in, her way, in their way. And then lastly, you can describe how you felt at the very end when you accomplished that goal. And of course, last but not least, we, would, we want you to IDR for today and practice the skills that we've been talking about and using in fables. Uh, we would like you to read in um, a fiction book uh, during your IDR time and think about what might be themes or lessons in your story. You might be saying, I just started this book, I don't know. But after some IDR time, there could be some things that you're thinking that the author might be trying to tell you. So the first question up here, it says, what do you think might be a theme or lesson in your story? What in the story makes you think that? It doesn't mean right away that you'll know completely, but you can give a good guess at it and that's okay. And the sentence starter that we used earlier was, I think the theme is, and the reason I think this is. And the second part of this is, what do you think the author wants readers to learn or realize from this story? What in the story makes you think that? And another way that might be helpful to answer this question would be, I think something the author wants me to learn or realize is, and the reason I think this is. Now, when you give your reasons, that's the text evidence that comes from the book, that supports why you think that that might be the theme or why you think that's what you want the author wants you to learn or realize. I hope you've enjoyed the time where we learned and talked about fables and visualizing them and looking for theme. I hope you enjoyed the text to text connection and then also making the text to self connection in this lesson. I hope that as you IDR, you'll be able to practice that skill of trying to really think about what the lesson or the theme might be 
but what the author is trying to help you realize or learn. I hope you've enjoyed this time again, and thank you for being with me. I've had a great time, and we wish we were together, um, and we hope that that will be soon enough for everybody.